Well, sell your raptors, here we go, down the drippy rodeo. Yeah! All right, enough of that nonsense. Welcome back to another Trippy Food live stream. It is Saturday, and Doodle hears me talking to the camera, so I that there will be snacks. Uh, Doodle, get out of the trash. I'll have snacks for you. I do have his uh, his chicken and his liver snacks, so... Uh, and he's begging for one of those right now, so I'm going to give him a little bit of liver to help him out. I don't see anyone in the room. Oh, there's Janice. Hello, Janice. How are you in this fine Saturday, windy Saturday? I don't know if it's windy down where you are. You're about, uh, I think, 30 to 40 miles from where we are, something like that. Here, dude. Have some liver. There he goes. Speaking of liver, um, I, um, I filmed my challenge from uh, Tom, old guy in Colorado's um, 2020 burrito challenge. So basically, he uh, that was his parody, his trippy food parody. And in that parody, he made this, uh, what he called 2020 burrito, uh, which was a bunch of like things to, that he put together that didn't belong together in a burrito. And he took a bite of it, and he spit it out. And he said, and I said when I was doing the reaction video, oh, you got that wrong. I would have swallowed that bite. So, uh, so I've been waiting to do that video. Uh, but the one thing I couldn't find is beef liver. It seems like the stores, most of the grocery stores, don't carry beef liver anymore. And I don't know why that is. I've tried looking it up. I don't see anything. There's not like a liver shortage. Every animal has one. I don't know why there seems to be a liver shortage in uh, in the grocery stores, or they just don't carry it anymore. They don't have chicken livers either, which is really, really kind of weird. But I did manage to find frozen livers and finally did that episode. And I will not let you know. I will not tell you. Well, whether or not I actually swallowed that bite, but uh, but it will be in the video, and you can see that when it comes up. So uh, I, t I, I promised Tom that it would be a surprise. Now, Tom may or may not join us today. Uh, he is doing civic duty stuff today, so uh, local, uh, local civic duty stuff, and so he may or may not join. I think he was going to um, listen, listen in uh, if he could, but, uh, but may not be able to respond to us. So, uh, Tom, if you're out there and you're watching or you're listening, uh, happy Saturday to you. Also, uh, Julie, uh, Julie may or may not be joining us. Uh, uh, she was having doggy problems, so her uh, one of her pups, um, Boston Terriers, Vader, um, had some problems with his legs or his spine or something, uh, or some neurological problem, and he ended up in the hospital overnight. But he was progress was good, and again, don't know what's going on with that. So she may or may not join us today. So we'll see. Um, it is very windy here. Yeah, I guess it's windy. It's windy across the Southland. Uh, Philip, you're in the room. Liver alone, cheese mine. <laughs> I'm torn between two livers. Uh, Amy Kiki in the room. You're early, Amy. Usually you come in at the end, but I'm glad you could join us. And Big Tony back once again. Welcome, Big Tony. Uh, everybody's saying hi, which is good. Yeah, poor doggies is right. Uh, Doodle's okay. Doodle, uh, Doodle's been spending a lot of time out there. We took him to the dog park yesterday. He, he's, he's slow in, um, he's slow in, um, socializing with other dogs, but we'll get him there. Hey, Ryan Jones in the room. Hello, Ryan. Happy Saturday to you, Ryan. Aw, he's so cute. He's just, like, you know, begging for little pets and stuff like that. Uh, before we get started... But before we go over everything, uh, and again, uh, I still have not gotten new cards, so we're going to do what we did last time is kind of read trivia questions, but pretend we're reading them off the card. Um, hey, Lola in the room. Hey, Lola, how you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you on. Um, so uh, what was I going to mention? Oh, right. Um, so this week, so these are a couple of things that happened this week, and, and you may or may not have participated in that. So Krispy Kreme. So uh, you guys know, I think everybody knows, that um, they just landed a, a, another rover on Mars, and there's a helicopter there, and, you know, it, it goes in craters and all that fun stuff, and it's sending back, like, fantastic pictures, and, and, and it's an awesome thing. Um, however, uh, Krispy Kreme, I think this was on, I want to say this was on Thursday, Krispy Kreme was offering a limited edition Mars donut. So it was a donut that was decorated to the planet Mars. I don't know, like, if it was any special flavor or anything. Um, I really didn't feel like waiting in long lines to get one of these Mars donuts, but maybe one of you have. So uh, did, any, if, did anybody out there? Um, oh, from Carmel. Nice. I love Carmel. Uh, up near um, Monterey, beautiful area up there. Um, have fun. 
enjoy, um, unless it's business, in which case, you know. Is, uh, is JD watching as well, Lola? Uh, let's see, where did we lose? Uh, oh, Julie is here. Hey, welcome, Julie. I'm glad we got that straight. Now, Julie told me earlier that um, it was showing on YouTube that the live stream was going to be at 9 p.m., uh, and it said 1 p.m. on the live stream. I thought maybe there was an issue with the location or something. Um, I, I don't know if you guys are joining because you're just regulars and you know it's at usually at 1 p.m. Pacific time, and that's when you're joining. But I'm not sure where the 9 o'clock came up. She showed me a screenshot of it, and it, it said 9, you know, 9 p.m. So it's kind of weird. So, um, and see, everybody's asking about the doggy, the doggy. Um... Oh, good, good. Uh, Vader's home. So, uh, good prognosis. I mean, he's he's like he's he's better, or or do you have to take him back again? How is how is Vader? Ever have an apple there? An apple where? We are. To oh, car <laughs> caramel apple. Uh, um, hey, the Cassandra in the room. Nice. We can. I was just talking about the cards, saying how you know. Again, we went through all the cards, and so we're going to pretend. To read the cards today but we'll you know we'll do trivia questions and pretend to read the cards until we can get some more cards so we need to do that um okay oh and lola said hi to doodle so doodle doodle is uh doodle you want to say hi you want to come up come here come here come here doodle let's say hi to everybody and then you you can have another snack afterwards it's doodle isn't he adorable he's such a good pup He's like, where's the snacks? All right, dude, you can have a snack in a little bit, okay? So as soon as, when I open a snack, you can have a snack, okay? Does that work? All right. There you go, dude. I like that his name's Doodle because then I can call him Dude, which I do. You know, you're on for weeks of home rehab, but he's home and alive, so I'll take it. Oh, good news. I, that, I suppose it was good news. Say hello to your beautiful wife, Claudia. She, uh, my beautiful wife, Claudia, misses strippy food. Um, is out taking advantage of this wonderful day, a uh, breezy but wonderful day, and um, she is um, she is walking the coast, walking the coastline, uh, not not forever, uh, just for the afternoon. So you should back. Maybe she'll pop in while we're on. Maybe not. We'll see. Oh, anyways, so back to uh, Krispy Kreme. Did anybody get the Mars donut at Krispy Kreme? Anybody out there? Mars donut Krispy Kreme? So uh, again. I don't know what flavor it was. I don't know if it was a special one-time flavor. Or they just decorated it to look like the planet Mars or anything. It just seemed kind of like, 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 is it really worth it to, to, to wait in that long, 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 long line just to get a donut that looks like the planet Mars? But I don't know. Maybe maybe one of you did, and it was worth it. Oh, no. Uh, I wiped out on the ice last night and needed a vet myself. So the house smells like Ben Gay. I hate that smell. Hey, JD in the room. Welcome. Hey, you're 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 not um, you're not using your regular login. It's a new login, I suppose. But uh, but welcome, welcome to the room, John. JD. Uh, okay, Jesus, be careful. Yeah, well, it, Phil, it's it's kind of a hereditary thing, you know. We we fall down a lot. We break things. We drop things. You know, that's just that's just our gig. That's what we do. Ah, oh, new phone. Okay. <clears throat> well, I hope you enjoy the show. I'm glad glad you could join us on your Saturday um, uh, chilling up in Carmel. And and no, it's not caramel. It's Carmel. Car Carmel, I'm sorry. Uh, one of the California missions in Carmel. Really beautiful little uh, mission. But, uh, you know, if you can get past the, the whole Spanish conquest thing. Uh, Big John TV said, had it and said it was a regular donut with chocolate cream inside. Yeah. Okay. You know, Mars actually has chocolate cream inside. They're they're actually doing some drilling on the with the um, rovers, and they're finding that it, Mars actually has uh, chocolate filling in it. So, and the moon is made out of cheese. Everyone knows the moon's not made out of cheese, but if it was made out of barbecue spare ribs, would you eat it? Um, Dad is my yeah, exactly, Julie. That's what I tried to explain to her. Uh, genetics, you know, um, stupid genetics. Sure, that's fine too. Uh, this Ben expired in 2017. What did I miss there? Ryan said that I missed Ryan. Oh, there. Oh, so is Ben happy or is he simply accepted and needs some new pronouns? Ben. Oh, Ben. Ah, that Ben. Okay. 
Got it. Hey, welcome to the room, Ryan Jones. You snuck in there, but that's okay. Um, oh, also this week. Uh, so I don't know if uh, uh, I don't know if anybody part partook of this, but on Thursday on McDonald's website. They had a limited number of $5 swag packages, so you could sign up for these. And you got a, a it was a hoodie for their new chicken, the crispy chicken sandwich. And there was a hoodie that said it had a chicken thing on it. And then you got a coupon, I guess it was, that allowed you to get the crispy chicken sandwich a day early. I think it debuts on Monday, something along those lines. Um, it sold out pretty easy. I, I got on the website at 8 a.m. and uh, it was all, everything was all sold out, everything. But, you know, a $5 hoodie, that's not bad, even if you end up giving it to Goodwill. So, uh, so I, I, well, also it came with a custom song. I don't know if that's like a CD or a, a download. I don't know what this custom song was. Apparently there was a song about the crispy chicken sandwich and, um, and the, the coupon. So it would have been nice to get the crispy chicken sandwich a day early, but you know, it doesn't matter. I'll go, I'll go and get it anyway. It doesn't matter what, if it's a day early or not. Your uncle Larry was a bigger klutz than anyone. Uh, well, I don't know that that Larry was a bigger klutz. That Larry got hurt more. So, so I think um, I think you know uh, Julie and I we 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 are kind of klutzes, but we don't get hurt as much as um, as Uncle uh, as Julie's Uncle Larry, my brother Larry, Massachusetts Larry does. So, uh, um, hey Farsh. Farsh, I do not recognize your name. So you are new to the new to the uh, chat or new to the um, to the channel, new, new new subscriber, new whatever. But uh, but either ways, uh, welcome everybody. Please give a happy and hearty trippy mood welcome to Thar Tharsh. Uh, so Tharsh, where are you from? Uh, what's your gig? Is this the first time in the room, or have you like you watched before and and this is just your first time in the chat? Please let us know. We'd love to talk with you. And Sarah Harris, another one who I don't recognize the name. Sarah, welcome to the room. Sarah, where where do you hail from, Sarah Harris? Welcome to our uh, welcome to our live stream. Uh, are you new to the chat or are you just uh, are you new to the live stream? But welcome either way. Uh, okay, so we got the we got that stuff out of the way. The uh, hoodies, the chicken sandwich, the Krispy Kreme thing. Let us review our snacks. So, Oregon. Hey, Sarah. I lived in Eric, Oregon, Oregon. I lived in Oregon, Oregon for four years. Lived in Portland, Oregon. Love Oregon. Oregon is awesome. Uh, okay, I put these in order of, of uh, I think, flavor. It's just so that, you know, you don't eat something that kills the flavor of everything else. Cool Canadian. Oh, long-time subscriber. Well, Cool Canadian, welcome to the room as well. We got a, a, a whole room full of new people here, and I'm not sure where they're coming from, but uh, it's nice to have a, a room full of new people, so it's kind of nice. Tharsh, cool, uh, cool Canadian, Sarah Harris, um, all, all uh, new, to the, new to the room, new to the chat, so welcome, everybody. Oh, Toronto, Canada, found you from Reckless Eating. Nice, Tharsh, nice. Um, what does Tharsh mean? Uh, be careful, Phil, family channel. <laughs> Just in case, uh, love your content. Living in Ohio, moved here from Toronto, Canada. Thanks for great videos. Well, thank you, uh, cool Canadian. Uh, you're living in Ohio, but you're you are still <clears throat> you are still clinging to your Canadian heritage, and I think that's wonderful. So, I love Canada. Canada is awesome. Um, there was something else. Oh, because Amy Cakey in the in the room. So, Amy, you were on a cup not last week, but uh, the week before, and you asked a question that I missed. <clears throat> in the uh, in the live stream, and so I will answer it uh, here. So you asked, um, is there a possibility that we will do a meet and greet when COVID is over? And the answer is yes, of course, we, we should do that. And um, I think, if I remember correctly, you're out in in Inland Empire, is that right? But, uh, you know, we'll do something, uh, we'll do something locally here, we'll do something that people can get to, we'll, we'll, we'll plan it ahead. Um, and we'll all get together and do something fun. And then uh, once travel starts up and I start traveling to other areas, I'll let people know that I'm going to that area and we'll get together with uh, with subscribers and watchers and fans from uh, from other areas as well. So we will do meet, meets and greets, uh, things along those lines uh, once this is over. So yes, Amy Cakey, uh, I did not get to that question, but I didn't want to forget about it at all. Um, found you from gangs. Gangs? 
No, I'm not in a gang. Um, hey, Rob Switch in the room. You're early, Rob. Good to see you again. Rob Switch, everybody, also from Ohio. Uh, yes, I'm in the IE. Uh, that's what I thought. And yeah, we'll do something. Hey, Zach Attack, welcome back. Welcome back, Zach Attack. I actually did that rap style, but you don't want to hear that. I am not going to do anything in rap style. Not sure about meeting you in person. I might spoil the magic. Well, if you don't want to meet me in person, you're going to have to get a DeLorean and go back quite a few decades. So, uh, sorry, that ship has already sailed, Julie. All righty. Um, so, we were going to do snacks. So, this, I just love this. I mean, I love the presentation of this. this little, look at this little happy little fan thing here. And, and, and the whole bag is in a language that I cannot understand. This is, what is this? This is uh, Hai Thai Mat Dong San Peanut Crunch Snack from Korea. So it is a peanut crunch snack. I don't know what that means. Uh, it's not made from, it's, it might, might be made from peanuts, but it doesn't look like they just put something on peanuts. It looks like maybe sesame seeds. There's sesame seeds on it, and it looks sticky. So maybe there's like honey and sesame seeds. I was not going to read the, the, the uh, ingredients. You want us to do that? We could do that. Let's see. Wheat flour, mixed edible oil, uh, rosemary. That's interesting. Uh, sugar, corn syrup, ew, processed peanut, processed grain, egg white liquid, sweetened condensed milk, yeast, processed skim milk powder, shortening, egg yolk liquid, ew, refined salt, ammonium bicarbonate, malt powder, calcium carbonate, Proteus Lactobacillus Brevis. Wow, there's some serious stuff happening here. And does this one have one of those uh, California 65, uh, Proposition 65 warnings on it? Yes, it does. Warning, this product can expose you to a, blah, 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 a chemical known to the state of California to cause cancer. Yes, uh, Prop 65. Good old Prop 65. They have to label it. Usually it's from the packaging. There's something in, something in the ink. Something in the packaging that, um, that there's, uh, they, they use something that will cause cancer, maybe a chemical or something. Uh, when uh, Hopefully it's not in the food itself, but we're going to take a chance anyway. Hey, hermano Juan Dosinueve. Hello, chat and Dal. Hello, El Mar Juan Dosinueve, or 209, as you like to call. Uh, did anyone else sneak in while I was busy yapping? Uh, nope, I guess not. Uh, Doodle, I know you you heard the bag, but it, I didn't open it yet. I promise you that when I open it, when I open the snack, you can have uh, you can have your chicken snack, all right? Because it gave you some liver already. So, lactobacillus is sourdough, right? I think so, um, but you know, like are these sourdough peanut uh, snack, crispy peanut snacks? I don't know. Um, Item number two is out of the, um, here it is. It is out of the Turkish Munchies box. That was a birthday gift from Julie. Thank you again, Julie. If I didn't thank you before, I think I did. You might not have been on. Um, so I did open this up, and uh, there's these little pamphlets all over the place. Um, and so uh, we're going to do a snack from this box today. today. Uh, this is, what is this? This is... Ochre crispy kubuk cracker. I may not be. I may not be saying that right. Uh, from Turkey, uh, it's from the Turkey Munchies by Mukzoin. I may not be saying that right either. Uh, and um, they they do have some spicy ones. This is not one of the spicy ones, but it does have onion, leek, garlic, parsley, pepper, spearmint, thyme, basil, and tomato paste in it. So it's uh, it's herbal. There's a lot of herbs in this. So uh, I think it's going to be like a strong flavor of herbs. But, you know, not not spicy or sour or anything that's going to kill the taste of anything else. So that's one of the items that we took out of the box. I mean, just check this out. Look at this. We're going to be eating out of this box for weeks. Look at this. Look at all this stuff. And I don't know what anything is. I mean, they, they have like a little sticker that kind of tells you what things are. I like this because it says nine cat tat, like it's supposed to be a Kit Kat, but it doesn't look like it's chocolate covered. So that's interesting. There's a lot of, like, what is that? Is that a snowball? What is that guy? I don't know what that guy is. So, um, yeah, a uh, big box full of stuff that we'll be eating over the next few weeks. Uh, maybe next week. Maybe next week we'll just, just do stuff out of that box. I think that we can do that. We will do that next week. 
Um, <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so that was number two. I mean, let's hope it's not number two, or it doesn't taste like number two. Uh, number three, and this came out of the uh, gift bag that Claudia, uh, Mrs. Trippy Food, uh, gave me for my birthday. And uh, this is from Cost Plus World Market. And this is, the brand is Hidden Valley, uh, I'm sorry, Hayden Valley, Hayden Valley Foods Bubblegum Yogurt Pretzels. In the words of Harrison Ford, I got a bad feeling about this. Um, but uh, Hayden Valley Foods is in Urban Crest, Ohio, and they do a bubblegum flavored yogurt pretzel. And we'll try these. I, I just, I'm not a big fan of bubblegum, but we're going to try them. We're going to see what happens. Uh, hey, Drew Horst, almost right to join the stream before work. I would have been livid. Well, you can always watch it and play back because they always get recorded. Oh, speaking of that, I have to stop one moment and apologize for last week. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was a bad connection. I don't know if it was a problem on YouTube. I don't know if it was a problem on my PC or something. But it, everything went haywire. I think it stopped. Like, I could see myself, but then it stopped broadcasting. I had to stop it, had to restart it, and then everyone couldn't get back on because everybody didn't know that I had to start a new stream to end it. And so my apologies on that, and I, and I hope we didn't miss too much. But, um, but, but please accept my apology for that bad uh, the end of the stream last week and kind of went south. Uh, let me know if you start to see issues like that. Pop in right away and let me know or text me. You know, if, if I can't, if you're if you're trying to get in touch with me and I can't see it because I'm just looking at myself talking. But um, but maybe uh, maybe you can hear me and you can't see me. And so 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 somebody out there text me um, or or send me something on instant messenger or something if you can't uh, if you can't see me. So. Um, Drew, we got you. Let's see. Anybody else? No need to apologize. YouTube is fickening. Yeah, it is. I just like, you know, I don't like, I, I really look forward to Saturdays, to doing the live stream on Saturdays. Look forward to talking to all of you and, and reconnecting and um, in our little community. And when that gets taken away from me, um, it bothers me. And so that's why I, I apologize. So my apologies to you. Uh, old pineapple reminds me of bubblegum taste. Hmm. Interesting. Old pineapple. Mm, like uh, like dried pineapple, like like a dried pineapple. Does it have a bubblegum taste? I don't know. I mean, like, what is bubblegum taste? What taste? What flavor do they use for bubblegum? It's always interesting. I like um, when when I was a kid and used to collect baseball cards. Let's see, what else? Was it? Baseball cards, Batman cards, and um, I think Garbage Pail Kids. I think they came and they came with that that crappy stick of powdered covered gum, uh, uh, bubble gum, and I just hated the flavor of that. But what is that flavor? That's an excellent question. What is that flavor of bubble gum? You know, is it like, is it supposed to be some sort of fruit? Is it supposed to be some sort of spice? What is the flavor of bubble gum? Yeah, that's an interesting topic. Throw it out there if you know. Hey, Jesse Torres in the room. Jesse, I was going to ask you about something. or Oh, no, no. I know what it was. So, Jesse, you had recommended that I check out OC Food Diva, uh, which is one of the other channels. And uh, I, I, like, uh, I like the channel. The only comment I would have about OC Food Diva is that they seem like they do mostly, um, uh, mostly paid um, paid videos. So it seems like, like, uh, in, like in, they're endorsing uh, products or something. But maybe I'm just I haven't watched enough of that, and then there's other stuff in there as well. But like the channel, uh, like uh, like her personality and everything. So OC Food Food Diva, uh, I like the channel. So thank you for the uh, for the uh, suggesting it, Jesse. Also the trips who are uh, I don't think they're on yet, but uh, the trips who were on, I think it was last Monday we did an episode with the trips where we. Uh, uh, but I was on their live stream on Friday, or actually I was watching their live stream on Friday, and they suggested Elaine, the food reviewer, who's from Nova Scotia, uh, Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia, and um, which is New Scotland. Uh, I was watching, uh, I was watching uh, the channel, and I like her stuff as well. So a uh, couple of new channels to check out that are really good: OC Food Diva, Elaine, the food reviewer. So check those out if you get a chance. Uh, I like the last collab you did, uh, the collab with the trips, because uh, I I've been doing a lot of collabs lately, and um, and sometimes I lose track of which ones uh, we released. I'm trying right now to um, to edit 
the video. Uh, I just did another one with Tom, uh, Tom Raymond, old guy from uh, in, in Colorado. We did um, a snickle, a deep fried snickle, which is a Snickers bar in a pickle. And um, uh, it was a lot of fun doing it, but uh, but unfortunately, there's a lot of edits in it, and my um, my editing program is going wonky when I try to uh, render it. So um, it's going to take a little while. I was hoping to have that up. Uh, he wanted to have it up Sunday. I'm trying to get it for Monday, but we'll see what we'll see what happens. I got I got to I got to figure out the um, the editing program because it's a little bit weird. The gum was always brittle and broken to pieces. It did. I forgot what flavor it was. I imagine it would be like a juicy fruit. That wasn't like juicy fruit because I liked juicy fruit. On juicy fruit, I'd just be I, I'd pop five in my mouth at the same time. I didn't like the flavor of, of bub, the bubble gum. Like. Uh, double bubble didn't like the flavor of that didn't like the flavor of the that that dry stick that uh, brittle dry stick that came with the baseball cards didn't like that flavor either unlike other channels you don't need a backup i just i watch just you all the time well me and doodle no every once in a while we have somebody like if somebody comes over like uh, occasionally uh my grandson dallas dj uh, if he's over we'll get him on you know we'll pop him in here um and i have an open invitation for people who come over but uh, unfortunately, a lot of like family and friends are a little bit shy of getting in front of the camera, and so you know, I know some of you aren't. And if you were ever over here, you would like if Matt came over today. If Matt just just decided that he was going to stop by, we'd get him on camera, and he wouldn't be shy about it. He would just jump right on. According to Google, bubblegum is supposed to taste like strawberry, banana, and cherry. Maybe. I'm sure it's all artificial flavors. Maybe, but when I back when I was collecting baseball cards, that was probably like the late '60s, early '70s. Um, maybe they were re using real flavors, but I don't know. It just tasted like bubble gum. Didn't taste. I don't remember it tasting fruity. So that was kind of weird. Uh, juicy fruit makes me gag. No, I don't mind juicy fruit, Amy. Uh, I noticed that as well. The paid videos, which seems to hardly get any views at all. So I'm assuming she just has good connections in the business. I guess so. But uh, but she's good. I mean, I, I like the channel. Uh, like I said, it, uh, maybe maybe I will suggest something, and maybe we'll do something together or something where we'll get her to do something that's not necessarily a paid video. You know, of course, if that's how you make your money. You know, you got to make money. So that's it. Hey, Linnea, what in the room? I'm not speaking of Canada. We weren't speaking of Canada. We were earlier, but uh, but uh, welcome, Lynn. Always good to see you. Glad you could join us today on this um, sunny Saturday here. Uh, maybe a snowy Saturday where you are. Oh, speaking of sunny and not sunny, uh, I know we have uh, people out there in Texas, so uh, if, if you are from Texas, please give us a shout out and let us know that you're okay, because it's like it's like a, a hell frozen over down there. I mean, it's bad. Pipes frozen, no heat, no electricity, you know, uh, ice and snow, and they don't know how to handle ice. Well, they do like up up, up in uh, the plains, up in uh, not the plains, the plateau, like up in uh, Lubbock, that area, the north of the Panhandle. They know how to handle that that up there, but you know, in places like Houston, Dallas, uh, Austin, they don't know how to handle snow and ice, and this is bad. So, uh, if you have friends in um, in Texas, check in on them, make sure they're okay. And if you are from Texas, let us know you're okay, because um, I spent 12 years in Texas, living in Texas, Austin, Texas, love Texas, and um, and uh, just hope everybody's okay. So, if you're in the ear ear sight. If you're in ear, ear sound, ear, what do you call that? Ear range, hearing range. If you're in hearing range of my voice, um, um, my prayers are for you, and uh, and I hope you you uh, are okay. And please, like, let us like I like I said, stay in touch and let us know how you're doing. So, Texas frozen wasteland now. There is also a gator and Gatorade. I know. Can you believe that, Ryan? Psh. Yeah, lies. I hate that. Maybe I should make a Gator Gatorade. That'd be a good. Uh, speaking of names, I'm disappointed with squirt. It does not indeed squirt. Well, Ryan, I promise you, if you shake up the can before you open it, it will squirt. So there you go. There is there is some honest honesty there. Uh, yeah, Julie, I know you're not shy, but uh, you're not here either. But if you were here, we would get you on the live stream. So, or maybe when I come to visit next time, we'll 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 do a live stream from uh, you know from Boston on a on a Saturday, and uh, you can join in. That'll be fun. Always fun. Uh, Juicy Fruit was great in the 90s. Um, it was either Big Red, Double Mint Gum, or Juicy Fruit. Uh, one of my favorite gums is Blackjack. Blackjack was the original uh, commercially available chewing gum. Uh, it's from Adams, and it is uh, licorice flavored. 
And the way that came about was uh, Adams, the guy who started the company, was friends with um, Generalissimo Santa Ana from Mexico. Yes, the Santa Ana that um, that um, uh, in, invaded the Alamo. Uh, invaded is that the right word? Attacked the Alamo, seized seized, seized the Alamo. Uh, that Santa Ana. So once he was captured at the uh, Battle of San Jacinto, um, he uh, he was sent back to. He was sent back to Mexico to tell them to lay off Texas, and eventually he was arrested. And he was, but he was, he was not jailed. He was sent up to Staten Island, New York, to live up in Staten Island, New York. And when he was there, he befriended Adams, who, who, um, he was, um, Santa Ana was chewing on something, and he says, "What is that?" And he says, "It's chicle, like chiclets. It's chicle, which is like from a rubber tree, and it's something that they just chew, in Mexico they just they would chew on it. And so Adams developed chewing gum based on." Santa Ana's eating chickle. And uh, there's a little little known and even less cared about fact. So we just kind of went off in a history tear right there. But uh, yeah, it's food and it's history. So uh, you might like that. Uh, also, sorry for the political jab. Was there a political jab? I missed that, uh, Ryan. So that's OK. Um, I didn't see one. That's OK. Um, hmm, I must have missed that. So that's OK. It's earshot. Is it earshot? It is. I guess it is earshot. Yeah. Okay. In earshot. So Texans in earshot. Let me know that you're okay. I hated Big Red when I was a kid. I like it now. I haven't had. I had Big Red when I was a kid. I don't know that I hated it. And I don't know that I loved it. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have to revisit that and uh, try Big Red again. I think it's, it's like, is, is it cinnamon flavored? Tastes like the Red Hots? Like those little, those little candy uh, Red Hots, maybe? Big red? I don't know. Is it? What does it taste? I think it tastes like cinnamon, but I'm not sure. Um, Gatorade was invented by the science department of the Florida Gators for the football team, so it does have gator in it. Well, it doesn't have that kind of gator in it, unless one of the f for, uh, football uh, footballers was eaten by a gator and then they used that. So then it might have a gator. Then it'd be double gator. Uh, I like history, so if you would like to like to talk about history, then I am all for it. Okay, well, thank you, Big Tony. Uh, it'll come up there, and, and I won't shut up about it. So, you know, it is what it is. So also, from the uh, from the bag of goodies that Claudia got me from uh, Class Plus World Market for my birthday is this, which was really interesting. It, the company is, who's the company? The company is Season, and the product is called Cavi Art. They can't call it caviar because it's not caviar. Caviar, which is fish eggs, and this is not fish eggs. This are, these are black seaweed pearls. Now, there is a marking on the box. Where did that go? I know I saw it initially. There is a K on the box that indicates that this is, oh, there it is, kosher. This is kosher. It doesn't say it's vegan. Now, seaweed by nature, is vegan. Now, if you really, 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 really dig into it and you go like, well, seaweed comes out of the ocean, but if they dry it, but they don't, but there's like plankton and, and little microscopic animals in there, is it really vegan and everything? Like, you're really going to get down? You're really going to drill down to that if you're vegan? I don't know. If you're vegan out there, let me know. But um, so, so, but the thing is, seaweed itself is by nature vegan. They don't say it's vegan on the box, and I don't see any vegan ingredients in this. So this uh, contains water, salt, uh, extract of spices, cayenne pepper. Ooh, cayenne pepper. That's something you won't find in, in, uh, in uh, caviar. Turmeric, laurel, leek, dill, tarragon, citric acid, xanthan gum, potassium sorbate, and sodium benzoate, caramel color uh, for food coloring. So that's kind of odd. I mean, all those things that they put in here. Because it's like, uh, if you're going to make fake caviar... I think the thing you just want is you wanted to have a little bit of oceany taste and a little bit of salt, but they put a lot of uh, other seasonings and stuff in there you would never find in caviar. Just a little bit odd. Odd, but uh, they're black seaweed pearls, and we're going to eat it like it's going to be like eat it like it's caviar. Uh, I'm not going to make a comparison to caviar. I'm just going to say whether it's good or not because I mean honestly, with all those spices and stuff in it, it's like how is it? How are you supposed to compare that to caviar? You can't. So uh, so we will eat those. You know, you may have noticed in the thumbnail. For the live stream that i had these in there well i didn't talk about them because these are just crackers uh cars table water crackers i like these because they're very um neutral flavored they don't have a lot of salt on them um they're just like i said very neutral 
and uh, and it's a good um, palette for the uh, for the caviar. So that's we have the cars um, water crackers, which and in, in, in addition were also in the uh, goodie bag that uh, that Claudia provided. So uh, so two things out of Claudia's bag, one thing out of Julie's box, um, but we'll have more next week, and then something else that I just happened to pick up at. Uh, where was it? 99 Ranch? Not 99 Ranch. Uh, Hawaii Supermarket. It was the um, the um, Hatai Mat Dong Gans. Mat, mat Dong Gan. Uh, Hatai Mat Dong Gan San from Korea. Thank you very well. Very much. And uh, the uh, season uh, who does caviar is from Denmark. Uh, and uh, so I hope I covered all that. Uh, Hayden Valley Foods, Urban Crest, Ohio. Yeah, got to know that. And um, so our beverage today, and today is trippy food beer night, so we are going to have an alcoholic beverage in our fine glass that uh, Julie gave me for my birthday with my vintage on it, my vintage on it. This looked interesting. This is from uh, Abita, uh, Abita Brewery, and uh, this is PB and Jams. And uh, this is not listed as a beer. It is listed as a malt beverage. So that's interesting. It does have alcohol in it. Let's see. What is the uh, 8%? Wow, 8%. It is a malt beverage and uh, supposedly tastes like a peanut butter and jelly because there is strawberry and peanut butter in it. So uh, that looked interesting. It might be disgusting. We'll see. Uh, but it looked interesting, and I, I thought we would try that. that. That is our beverage of the day. Um, we, uh, As you can see, as you can't see, there we have... Um, um, our Ariel, Ariel is hanging on the wall because we're not going to use Ariel today because I want to keep the bottle cap. And so um, we have Richard Simmons instead. We're going to use Richard Simmons because Richard Simmons won't put a dent in the cap. All right. What I miss. Um, Val is very knowledgeable of history. Uh, Val is uh, Val is a generalist. He knows more and more about less and less until he knows absolutely everything about nothing. Uh, I, I, I know a lot of trivia. Ooh. That was not an earthquake. That was my knee hitting the end of the table. Um, that ought to be fun on playback. Um, I uh, I know a lot about trivial stuff, but it doesn't look good on my resume. So or I, it's not helpful on my resume. Let's put it that way. Hey, Bob here. <laughs> Bob is here, and you're just you're just going you're just doing the Bob thing. You're just like throwing the Bob thing out there. But welcome, Bob. Always good to see you. You're like a regular fixture here now. So you should be on the wall here somewhere. But you're like, you're like a regular fixture in the room, and it's always good to see you. Bob, for those who don't know, uh, Bob is a, um old friend of mine. Uh, I don't mean old like me, uh, although he is. Um, I mean old like uh, we've known each other since we were teenagers, probably like 17, maybe even younger than that, 17 years old, 16, 17 years old. And that was a long time ago. So known Bob for, for um, decades. Uh, very, very good friend, Bob. So. Welcome back to the room, Bob. Them crackers are really good. Well, uh, Tony, uh, Tony, they're good in that they don't uh, they don't impart like their flavors, and so they're good. They're good if you want to like put meats and cheeses on it. They're good if you're going to put spreads on it. They're good if you're going to put caviar on it or stuff that stuff where you want to taste that. But you know, rather than putting it on a spoon or you know something like that, it's just kind of like a palate. You put that on, and it's very neutral. So that's that's why those crackers are good. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Like I would sit there and just eat a box of those crackers. I would always put something on it. You know, even then, it doesn't say serving suggestion, but they show stuff on it. So uh, they don't show anybody just eating it as is. Well, I lied. All right, your show is a godsend during COVID since we social distance and really don't leave the house. That's what a lot of people say, uh, and some other people, um, some other people have used it for recovery. So, like in other words. Um, if they uh, like recovering from surgery or you know um, uh, were recuperating from something, you know, it was kind of like a, a godsend. So, uh, so uh, it, to me, I love it that it, in that um, uh, it lets me communicate with people uh, in in a um, in a community that uh, I might not otherwise uh, be able to do. Now, I'm not I'm not traveling either. I'm not uh, doing a lot of traveling. I think uh, just uh, maybe a week or two ago, we we, can't, we did that episode with the fork in the road in Pasadena, but that was just a thing. You drive over there, stand on the thing, take a picture of it. There's nobody out there. It's not like a, you know, hazardous situation or anything like that. And um, 
And so, um, so for me, it's, you know, it fills that void of not being able to travel and see people and see things and stuff like that. So, so it's good for you. It's good for me. It's good. It's all good. All right. Uh, hey, Scott Mansfield, welcome to the room. We didn't get started yet, so uh, so you're you're just in time. So we covered everything that we are going to uh, do. We are at 1.40 p.m., so we are lagging a little bit behind, but it's okay because usually when we're only doing one beverage on Trippy Food Beer Night, um, it um, you know uh, we seem to have enough time. So I, I will get started, and uh, I will pretend to read from one of our uh, trivia cards. Oh, yeah. Okay. Snow shoveling. I love snow shoveling. The last time I went to visit Julie, I think it was in February, and they got some snow, and um, and I was shoveling the driveway, and uh, and Julie said, uh, you don't have to do that. We have a snowblower. And I'm like, no, I like doing that. I like shoveling snow. I don't get a chance to shovel snow here in Southern California, so uh, I, I, I enjoy shoveling snow. Uh, let's see. Did I get everything? Did I cover everything that we need to start? Yes, I did. Okay. So uh, let's ask a trivia question and pretend we're reading it from the card. Um, okay. Where does the name pound cake come from? So for, so I'm sure you've eaten pound cake. Where does the name pound cake come from? Uh, so let's put that on the fake burner. Turn the fake heat down to low. Let that simmer for a while and open our first snack. Which is the, I'm going to mess this up, which is the uh, Hatai Mat Dong San Peanut Crunch Snack from Korea. Now there's a little twist tie on here. The question is, is it just a twist tie? Or then we're going to have to open it after that. So that uh, looks like that's the case. It doesn't look like it's resealable. That is like some elaborate packaging there. All right, it is not resealable. So it, it kind of looked like it had one of those, you know, those zip things, but, uh, but it doesn't. It just looks that way. See, now I have just opened a snack and Doodle is here at my leg because he knows I opened the snack. So he is an opportunist, and because he's a good boy, we have his chicken snack. Yes, Doodle, you can have a piece of chicken because you're good. That's kind of a little piece. Let's see. Maybe a little bit bigger piece to keep you busy. Want that? Yeah. Want that? There you go. Firefly 59. So Firefly is saying hi to Julie. I don't know if Firefly knows Julie. No, well, she's just saying hi, and they're saying hi back. So, um, yeah, Philip, um, the thing about rain in, um, in South Carolina, especially in that area, is, yeah, um, everything floods. It's, um, it's like that. So, um, yeah, everything gets wet, a lot of rain. Not like, um, not like Oregon rain. It's like you get a lot of heavy rain like for a few days and then it's dry for a while then maybe in another week or week or two weeks you get more rain in portland it's just like rain every day but sometimes just drizzle sometimes just overcast or whatever so yeah um maybe england because they use pounds instead of dollars because they pay that's an interesting concept pound cake recipe dates back to the 70 wow <laughs> um Philip is just like, he's either researching or he, he just knows his stuff. Um, what is my dog's name? Well, Firefly59, that is Doodle. And Doodle is famous on this channel because Doodle is a, uh, Doodle wants his own channel. And so he's always, I don't know if you heard his name, or he just didn't have enough snack. No, Doodle, we're going to have to pace you or you're going to be a 200 pound little dog. And I'm going to have to take you up for a roll. So, um, so just pace yourself. Um, Firefly, uh, you appear to be new to the room. I don't recall seeing you in any of the uh, chats before. So are you new to, oh my God, he's, I'm going to die of terminal cuteness because he's just sitting there like this, sitting up on his, on his back legs like this, looking at me just like terminal cuteness, like give me a snack. It's not going to work. Um, so Firefly, um, I don't recognize you before. 
have you been in the room before? Um, where are you from? And um, do we know you? And um, and welcome to the room. So everybody say hello to Firefly 59 and welcome them to the room. Uh, first time being able to catch a stream. How are you today, Trippy Food and Solo Blue? Well, um, yes, it is, it is your first time uh, to catch a stream. Uh, we don't recognize your name. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to our little community. Uh, good to see you. Uh, where are you from? Uh, how are things where you in your neck of the woods? Let us know. Everybody, please give a warm and hearty Trippy Food welcome to Solo Blue and Firefly. I think you've been doing that. Oh, Firefly, you're obviously from up, one, well, no, I was going to say you're obviously from up north, you, this, you can have some of our snow, you could be from Texas. Actually, I don't think it's just Texas. Um, uh, Sean, fr uh, formerly of Reckless Eating, but I think he's on his own channel. Uh, Sean is in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, he's been doing some videos and stuff, and they got a snow, snow in Nashville, Tennessee. There's like, there's snow everywhere. It's, uh, it's crazy. I, I don't know why we didn't get snow. Ever discussed on your channel before, what do you do for work outside of YouTube? Um, I typically do technical support, software and hardware technical support. That's typically what I do for money. And uh, YouTube is what I do for love. I love doing this. So um, there, we just discussed it. Uh, let's see. Uh, warming up when the snow is melting. Thanks, everyone. Solo and fire for our new to your channel. Watch Reckless Eating. Oh, okay. You're from Minnesota. Oh, I always want, you know, I, I just, I, I want to go to the Minnesota State Fair because I understand. I don't know if it's the biggest state fair, but it's always the most interesting one, Minnesota. Uh, Mall of America. I've been to Minnesota. Where I've been to? Austin, Minnesota. Austin, Minnesota, home of Hormel and Spam. I have been to Austin, Minnesota. I've been to the airport in, um, uh, Minneapolis as well, but but actually been to Austin, Minnesota. Hey, Sonic, welcome. Thank you for uh, sharing your Saturday with us, Sonic. Good to see you again. Uh, talking to you from my cell phone. Okay, well, I, I hope you're not driving, uh, but uh, just uh, but welcome and uh, good to see you again. Someday you and I and Philip should do a musical segment along with lunch food. We could do that. Uh, what is that, Philip? What is that? Uh, the app that you uh, that you use? I can't remember what it's called. But we should uh, let's instead of let's just talking about it after afterwards. Let's figure. Let's let's plan that and do something. And and maybe maybe we won't be able to do it for a live stream. But maybe we'll be able to do some sort of like um, you know we'll be able to film something like. It's not Zoom. I can't remember what the name of it is. But we'll be able to do some music and stuff with it. So so Bob. Hold that thought, keep that thought, and let's communicate after the live stream, and let's let's make that happen. I want to make that happen. Uh, since you work in technical support, do you ever watch the TV show The IT Crowd? They're not the IT Crowd, the IT Crowd, I imagine. Uh, I do not. Um, I don't have television. I don't have cable TV. Uh, I saw a lot of what I watch would be on Netflix or Amazon. So we don't have, we don't have television unless you know unless those shows go on um, uh, on Amazon or um, Netflix. I want to watch them. So I have not seen those. Jam Kazam, yes, thank you, Phil, Philip, uh, Philip and Bob. Let's plan on doing that and let's make it happen. And let's not just talk about it. Let's actually make it happen. So I'm done. I have to watch it. It looks like everybody else watched it. You can watch it on Netflix. Oh, good. All right. Thank you, Solo. Ah, thank you, Solo. I was trying to talk like Greedo, but I don't, you know. Uh, okay, so uh, we we got sidetracked. Uh, this is a, again, the, uh, what do they call it? Peanut crunch snack. Kind of weird. Looks like a microscopic animal. Here we go. Firefly, when I was out, when I was out in Austin, I was doing some work in Austin, not at Hormel, but the Austin Daily Herald, I think it was the newspaper out there. It's I don't know if they're even still around. Um, one of the things I wanted to do, but I didn't have time, was to go out to Blue Earth, Minnesota, and see the Jolly Green Giant statue that they have out there. I didn't get a chance to see it. So. When I get back to Minnesota, I will go see the Jolly Green Giant statue. I had a French baguette toasted with salami, roasted turkey, ham, French onion soup. I was watching. Oh my God, that sounds good. I would have. I would have liked. I'd be 
I, I wouldn't be watching the channel. I'd be eating that. That's that sounds awesome. I'm gonna have to watch that on Netflix. That sounds like that sounds good. Uh, we got Rogers Candy Store in Jordan, Minnesota. Talk about stepping back in time. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna too much to check out. I have to make a make a trip out of it and and spend a few days out there. These are weird. Weird in a good way. That's what we're all about here, right? Tripping food. It's crunchy. It is sweet. So there's like a glaze on it. But, you know, there's corn syrup on that. I think, I think that's like on the outside. The inside, kind of light and crispy. How does this work? You, you got to cover. What do you got to cover there? I can't remember how that works. Yeah. The inside's light and crispy. The outside has those little, I don't think they're sesame seeds, because I don't remember seeing sesame seeds in the, in the ingredients. Let's see. There are not sesame seeds in the ingredients, so I don't know what that is on the outside. Maybe peanuts on the outside? They're sweet, but it's not exceptionally sweet. It's crunchy. I mean, the sweetness seems to come from that coating, that glaze on it. really good I'll bet that it would be really good if you're gonna drink a bottle of this and have that with it so oh, I'm gonna go ahead and give that thumbs up pretty good I'll finish those hope everyone is safe help healthy thank God California isn't cold just windy well it depends on the part of California and you know yeah things th I remember um, how long ago was that? Maybe the early 2010s. Um, you know, temperatures here dropped to the into the 20s. It doesn't happen all the time. Killed my cactuses. So, um, you know, we get it. We get it here too. They've got puzzles too. I think you'll like it. I, I know I'll like it. Uh, it's the largest candy store. What's not to like? All right. Thumbs way up on that. Uh, let's go back to our trivia card. And the question was, what was the question? The question was, where does the name Pound Cake come from? Where does the name Pound Cake come from? So there was some interesting, uh, let's say I got to scroll all the way back up there. Um, maybe England, because they use pounds instead of dollars, they paid a pound for it, which is a great guess. Um, I like that better than the real answer. I think uh, Philip hit the nail on the head. I probably looked it up. True Pound Cake is a recipe that dates back to the 1700s. It gets its name of pound cake because of how it's made. Originally, the recipe called for one pound of each of flour, sugar, butter, and eggs. That is correct, uh, which is exactly what Janice said, which uh, is Big Tony also said the same thing. Later one said the exact same thing. So you guys are right on top of it. Uh, unfortunately, um, Firefly said, what is your dog's name? No, that was separate. I'm just kidding. Just tried the major melon Mountain Dew. Really good. Tried zero sugar. Ah, oh, I missed that, Scott. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I'm going to have to check that out, too. All right. So that goes here. Where does pound sand come from? Um, that's an excellent question. Because who would do that? Who would actually do that? Like somebody did that as a punishment or something, and that's why they told somebody to do that. It's a really weird thing. Because it's a family channel, we won't specify where you're going to pound sand, but... But uh, it is an interesting question, Phil. You're absolutely right. Pound cakes. Yes, pound cakes. Uh, are uh, They were this pound of each ingredient to uh, to put it together. Did you come in? You came in after we asked the question. Uh, the explanation would be too lowbrow for the show. The, the question to get people started, look it up if you get a chance. Uh, and then maybe we can talk about it later, like offline. That would be fine. So uh, let's do another snack. We're going to do two snacks, dinner beverage. And two more snacks. So let's do another question. And uh, oh, okay. Um, no, that's not really a question. That's really just kind of a statement. That's kind of a statement. Yeah, okay. Um, most oranges have the exact same number of segments in it. How many? How many segments do most oranges have in them? Most of them have the exact same number of segments in them. What is that number? We'll put that on the back burner, turn the heat down. And we're pretending the whole thing because we have no stove here. We've got no burner here. And we're not even reading off this card. 
Alrighty, so we're going to try our second snack, which uh, which was from Claudia, Mrs. Trippy Food, which are the um, Hayden Valley Bubblegum Yogurt Pretzels, Bubblegum Flavored Yogurt Pretzels. I am so looking forward to these. Not. All right, here we go. They smell fruity. They don't smell bubblegummy. And that smell like when you when you open up a new pack of baseball cards. Maybe I don't know. Did they still put gum in baseball cards? Um, but that smell of that bubble gum in the baseball cards. That smell. I, I'm not getting that smell in here. That's a that's a good thing. It smells a little bit fruity. Maybe a little bit artificial too. There's the yogurt yogurt coating. That's familiar. They're cool and creamy. There's the bubblegum flavor. It comes in afterwards. Got to eat a couple before you get to that. All right. I was a little bit scared of these. They're not too scary. They're actually kind of nice. They're sweet. They're creamy. But it do have the bubblegum taste, but it's not overwhelming. It's subtle. So I'm going to go ahead and give these a thumbs up. I will eat these sparingly, of course. But it's going to get a thumbs up for me. Bubblegum yogurt pretzels. Who knew? Who knew? No, seriously, I'm asking. Pretzels are my jam. Me too. I like the... Um, is, what is it? Um, what is it? The company from Hanover? Um... And uh, they do the uh, the hard sourdough pretzels. I really like those. I also like the bit the um, uh, the soft pretzels. The big the big soft pretzels. Love those too. When they start to get into like different like you know onion flavored pretzels and um, you know um, honey mustard flavored pretzels and stuff like that, I'm uh, they're okay. But I just like the old fashioned pretzel. Uh, even though I like the hard sourdough pretzels, a little bit of mustard on that and everything, Psh, primo. Pretzels are my jam. When you put jam on pretzels, that'll be interesting. Missed the question how to get my fiance to help me pull out of a nasty hang hangnail. Oh, ah, ooh, how did you do that? No, don't tell us. I'm, I'm one of those people that like feel other people's pain. Um, I like a mustard pretzel. Yeah, I love a mustard pretzel. Snyder's a Hanover. Thank you, Janice. Janice, you're good. You're just, I mean, you, you should be like, you're like my Ed McMahon. And I mean that, I mean that as in a, in a, in a very nice way. Do you know who Ed McMahon is? Does anybody know who Ed McMahon is? I know, Bob, you know who Ed McMahon is. I know, Philip, you know who Ed McMahon is. I know if Tom was here, he'd know who Ed McMahon is. Roll gold pretzels with a can of ginger ale. I, I usually get the roll gold like when I'm on the road. I'm on a road trip. I stop at a convenience store or something on the way. I'm, like, I'm hungry. I want something. I'll usually get the roll gold pretzels. But I, but I don't prefer those. I prefer the um, Snyder's. Um, and they don't always have them at the convenience stores and everything. So I just got the roll gold. You're right. Love a pretzel bun. Yeah. Um, so Solo Blue, I don't know if they still have it on their menu, but um, Wendy's, Wendy's was doing a, um, what do they call it? A beer cheese pub burger, uh, which is a burger served in a pretzel bun with beer cheese and everything. It was really, really good. So uh, Solo, check that out. See if uh, Wendy's still has that. I, I recommend that. Check that out. It was really, really good. We did an episode, I think. Here's Johnny. Yeah, I should have one. I, I mean, I'm, it would, what do you guys think? Do you, do you like the live stream like it is? Do you like? Would, you, would it be like cool to have a co-host? I don't have a co-host. I could make one. Uh, Ed McMahon from Star Search and Colonial Pen Life Insurance. Yeah, the guy that brings that giant check to your door. That Ed McMahon. Is there another Ed McMahon? There might be. Uh, I'm older than you, Val. Uh, are you sure about that, Lynn? I thought it was older than everybody. Have you tried Dots pretzels? I have not tried Dots pretzels. Are they uh, uh, they're like grocery store pretzels? You get them anywhere? Dots pretzels. I will have to try that. Thank you. Sadly, Wendy's about two hours from me. When I'm near one, Wex, I get one. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, I don't know if it's a limited time only thing. I would check. Wendy's is underrated from as far as fast food burgers. They blow. They blow McDonald's and Burger King out of the water. 
maybe they're not quite at Carl's Jr. slash Hardy's level. And um, and they're not going to be in and out by price point. Um, they're probably like they're on par, but a little bit different than than uh, the Habit or um, uh, I don't know. We could get it. I mean, we could do a whole show on burgers. We really could. Uh, I think we'll save that for the podcast. We'll do burger podcast or something. Local pr- uh, brewery makes pretzels from the spent grain after brewing. Oh, that sounds good. Served with grain mustard and beer cheese. Oh my god, that sounds awesome. That does sound. Would you believe I'm 69? Well, you're not that much older than Lynn, but uh, but yes, of course I would believe it. Why not? Unique blend split. Oh, I had those splits pretzels. Those are the like the flat ones, kind of. They're really crispy. I think that's what you're talking about, right? Extra dark. They are burnt. Are they are they burnt or are they using um, uh, pump pumpernickel? Are they using pumpernickel dough, which makes them extra dark? I don't know. And the shells, they are hollow. Yeah, I've had those, but I, they're like, they are it's like crispy. They're like slices, slices of pretzels. I have had those splits. You're right, absolutely right. <clears throat> Some of the targets have Dots pretzels there from South Dakota. I will check that out. Jack in the Box and Wendy's make great fresher burgers. I haven't been to, I haven't been to Jack in the Box in a while, so I'm going to have to go back to Jack in the Box just so I can have a burger and, and make a comparison to the other ones. Thank you, Sonic, for mentioning that. I always, I always leave Jack in the Box out. Their tacos suck. But um, but the burgers might be pretty good. I'll have to check that out. <clears throat> the question was, for the Cassandra who missed the question, the question was, what was the question? Oh, um, most oranges have the same number of segments. What is that number? And uh, I think, let's see what I see. Sonic said 10. Uh, let's see. Sonic was the first one. He said 10. Solo said 8. Sonic then said, depends on the size of the oranges, which is probably correct. Um, then Solo said, I rarely eat oranges, so eight is my best guess, which is a good guess. And, and that's the thing. Um, Solo, you may be new at this, but the way that, that the trivia questions work is if you know it, throw it out there. If you, if you think you know it and you want to take a guess, throw it out there. If you want to look it up and then put the answer out there, throw it out there because there are no rules. And we're not keeping track and we're not keeping score. It's just a fun thing and we're all learning. So, so you know, uh, your best guess is excellent. It, oh, I like that you're doing a best guess. That's good. Uh, let's see. Lynn said 10. I think it most, uh, uh, with the exception of eight, I think most people said 10, and it is, in fact, 10. So we'll put our pretend card on the pretend back burner on the pretend oven stove, stove, stove top, uh, and then turn the pretend to heat off. And it's time for our beverage. Yeah. So again, we are doing Abita. Abita, who is from where? Abita, who is from Abita Springs, Louisiana, and their PB Gems Malt Beverage with 8% alcohol by volume. So let's try this again. Uh, we are not using Ariel today. She is up there on the wall. Uh, we are using Richard Simmons because I, I want to keep the, bo- the bottle cap. And Ariel puts a little dimple in the top of the bottle cap, and man, I, I suppose you could still keep it, but um, you know, I'm into the aesthetics of that. See, perfect bottle cap. There we go. All right, I scrolled up. I need to scroll back down. I don't want to miss anything. Oh, Drew's taking off. Oh, he has to work. Okay. Uh, Drew, thank you for making Trippy Food a part of your afternoon, and I hope we see you again next week. Uh, always good to see you. Thank you, Drew. It's hard to see your picture. I can't tell. It looks You look a little like Jack Sparrow wearing sunglasses, but I can't tell. It's a tiny, tiny little picture. Again, this has strawberry and peanut butter in it, or strawberry and peanuts in it. So it's supposed to taste, it's supposed to taste like a PBJ because there's strawberry and peanuts in it. Let's see. That's an unusual smell. Not a great one. Let's see. Jenna sent a photo. I'm going to see if I can do that without. Oh, okay. Thank you, Janice. I think I've seen those. I think I've seen those at Ralph's, which is our Kroger store. So, uh, But thank you for that. I will, I will look for those. Uh, let's try our Abita in our Age Perfection Vintage 1960 glass. That was a birthday gift from Julie. Julie, are you still out there? You're going to rate my pour? Here we go. This is a malt beverage and not a beer, though. There's bubbles. Mm. 
My picture is an old fire truck. Yeah, it's really hard to tell when it's that tiny. I can barely see what people's pictures are. Sonic's jet, it looks like a son like a jet breaking the sonic boom, uh, doing a sonic boom. I'll do a nice little collection of that. And Phillips looks like a like a Canada goose with its wings spread open. I'm not sure what that is. All right, here we go. Good pour. Thank you, Bob. Julie, uh, oh, a nine! A nine out of a hundred? <laughs> a nine out of ten? That would be nice. Cheers. No, Phil, there's no head on that beer. I think if I just poured it directly into the glass, there wouldn't be much of a head. Wow. That is not beer. It does not taste like beer. But they do, you know, to be fair, they do say malt beverage and they do not say beer on the uh, label. That is weird. A little bit of sourness to it. But not um, not unpleasant. It's tangy. It's a tangy drink. Um, yeah, Solo, I thought it was going to be darker, too. I thought it was going to be more like a porter, you know, something along those lines. Where's the peanuts? I'm not tasting peanuts. I am getting a little bit of strawberry. It's really tart. A little bit sour. But not like an IPA. Not that kind of tart and, and, and sour. Not, not like IPA. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about this. If I'm going to judge them on getting the flavor of a PB and J, it's going to get a thumbs down. They don't. They don't hit that mark. I taste the strawberry a little bit. I don't taste the peanuts at all. It's not like uh, like belching beaver um, peanut butter milk stout, which you can definitely taste the peanuts in. But I can't taste the peanuts in that. It's ooh. That's weird. It's getting a thumbs in the middle from me. I mean, it's an interesting, unique, uh, maybe novelty drink. Um, <clears throat> they're not going to get a thumbs up because they missed the mark on the PB and J part. Like I said, if you if you don't mind like that sour the sourness to it and everything, that little tartness to it and everything, it's not a it's not bad, but it's not great either so yeah just thumbs in the middle on that one so maybe a little bit disappointing but that's okay uh let's see what's next oh, what's next we're uh doing another snack so uh let's see did i miss anything fireflies just talking we're talking about the and en and and i don't know how to pronounce that and hinga the bird <clears throat> maybe your belches will taste like peanuts i hope so it's like um has anybody out, out there ever had a durian shake so the thing is, you're drinking the durian shake. It does not have that crazy hard-on durian kick in the face. Uh, of, of like when you're eating durian, when you're eating fresh durian or even frozen durian. It does not have that uh, because it's mixed with milk and a bunch of other things. But then you burp later, and then you get that durian, and you're like, whoa. So maybe maybe that will taste l later when I when I burp that up. That maybe that will taste like PB&J. So, and, and if we're still on and I do that, I'll let you guys know. Uh, what's my favorite beer? Uh, that's a tough question. What's my favorite beer? Um, I like, like, I'm trying to think of what I would get. Oh, um, Deschutes Black Porter, I think, is one of my, it's one of my favorite beers. Uh, uh I don't get my favorite beer all the time because I'm always want to try something different. So I, I, I very, very seldom, like, uh, sometimes if I'm going, I, I say, oh, it's Trippy Food Beer Night every Saturday. Um, even if I'm doing, uh, soft drinks on the show Saturday night I'm having a beer so every every Saturday night one beer that's that's my beer for the week um, then like if I'm in the grocery store and they don't have uh, I don't want to buy a six pack I just want to buy one beer uh, usually I just go with like a Guinness or something I, I got a Guinness uh, maybe a Guinness extra stout and I'm just because I'm just buying one and that's the only that's the only thing decent that they have in singles so that's my kind of go-to but uh, but as favorite as far as favorite beer, well let's see I like the um, well we used to be Youngs I think it's now Eagle the banana bread uh, I think it's banana bread porter I want to say uh, that's really good 
Um, there's just so many good beers and so many beers that I really like. But probably um, the Narragansett Co- uh, er- 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 what is that? Narragansett Autocrat Coffee Milk Stout. That was really good. I like that one. But um, yeah, I think I think I guess that's it. We'll go with that. Uh, I like any room temperature stout. Yes, absolutely. Uh, stouts and porters, I think, are meant to be drunk drunk room temperature. I think you're absolutely right. I think chilling them kind of takes something away from the flavor. Usually, like if something says best served chilled, it's because it doesn't have a great flavor, and chilling it takes a lot of the flavor out of it. And a stout and por- stouts and porters, I think, are best served room temperature. I think you're absolutely right, Phil. Uh, what time are the lives? Oh, the live streams? Uh, every Saturday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. The only time that will change is if something happens, like where I have to be somewhere, I have to work, um, you know, uh, I'm I'm away filming or something along those lines. Then then then, but I'll let everybody know. But typically on that 1 p.m. Pacific time every Saturday. Would you say this beer would go well with something sweet tasting? Yeah, probably. Uh, I would pair this with like candy. Um. You know, I mean, uh, let's see. Maybe unless you wanted to add kind of like a, you want to add kind of like a fruitiness to something, like uh, maybe like maybe fish. Maybe maybe it would be okay with fish. But you know, other than that, it, it's like it's a novelty thing. I wouldn't need it. I wouldn't need it with a burger. Um, but uh, but yeah, maybe something sweet tasting. Maybe, but it's not like it. It's not like desserty, like a, you know, like a coffee porter. Or a coffee, you know, coffee stout or anything like that. So it's not a desserty either. So I'm not, I'm not actually sure. I think it would like go, it would go well with like a carrot cake. That's what I would, I would drink that with a carrot cake or something along those lines. We don't mention Gansett Autocrat Stout here. Yes, we do. Um, Fuggles and Warlocks, the last strawberry beer is in, wow. Fuggles and Warlocks, the last strawberry. I've never heard of that. It's fruity and malty and fine. I highly recommend it. Uh, have you or anyone in chat has? I have not tried it, the Cassandra, but I will look at uh, at my local um, Total Wine and More. They usually have everything. My friend is going. Uh, my phone is being done. My going on a tablet. We will see you when you come back. Um. Okay. Hey, speaking of icons, Philip, uh, does anyone recognize mine? So the trippy food icon. Does anyone recognize that? Let me know. All right, we're going to uh, read another card and go on to our next snack. Oh, my God, it's 2.12. Eh, we have time. We only have two snacks left. Uh, let's read another question. So the question is, let's see. The quiz, let's see. The question is, no, that's too easy. Nope, that's disgusting. Um... Hmm. Sure, let's ask that one. Why did Kentucky Fried Chicken change its name to KFC? Again, the question is, why did Kentucky Fried Chicken change its name to KFC? Let's stick that on the fake back burner. Turn the fake volume, the volume, the heat down. I don't drink, but I very much enjoy hearing about beers and alcoholic beverages review-wise. That is learning about them. Uh, yeah, and, and, and I don't drink a lot. Like I said, uh, one beer a week. That's what I drink. I look forward to Saturday nights when I can try something new. So that's that's my extent of, uh, of what I'm drinking. <laughs> Julie, now you have to explain to Philip why we don't talk about Narragansett's autocrat, autocrat coffee milk stuff. Uh, you know what? If you watch the video, it would be self-explanatory. I think. <laughs> no, 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 Julie, you're not telling the whole story. That's okay. That's okay, though. Uh, all right. So uh, we are on, on our uh, third snack, which is our uh, Ulker. Ulker? Am I saying that right? Ulker crispy kubik cracker from Turkey. Uh, Turkish munchies, and again, the, the one with all the herbs in it. Here we go. They look like tiny churros, and I think they're probably going to look more like hockey when I open these up. No smell. They do. They look like pocky. We did pocky, didn't we? I think we did pocky on one episode. They feel like they're salty. 
if that makes any sense whatsoever. Ooh, these taste like seasoned breadsticks, like tiny seasoned bread. Here, here, tiny Val, would you like a tiny seasoned breadstick? What do you think? He's not talking. I like these. I like these a lot. And they are using a lot of Italian <coughs> herbs. So like, if you like those breadsticks <coughs> at uh, Olive Garden, you would love these. There's some tomato paste in there too, I think. Parsley, thyme, white pepper. Wow. And tomato. Nice. They taste they taste Italian, but they're Turkish. I don't know, thumbs way up. I really like these. They taste like Italian breadsticks. Really nice. Wow, it was good. Yeah. Love that. In honor of Tom, I'm going to change my name to Dimquat. He would be proud of you, Janice. All right. So the question was, why did Kentucky Fried Chicken change its name to KFC? And the answers were, oh, I like this answer, but it's not true, because they don't use real chicken, uh, either to appeal to a more ge geographical audience or because the brand got stale like the chicken. I like that. Uh, KFC wanted to avoid the word fried, Janice says, to shy away from the word fried. That's why Kentucky Fried Chicken went to KFC, Big Tony says. People started eating healthier and didn't want to emphasize that it was fried, said Bob. And um, Julie said also the pigeon thing, but she's not talking about Kentucky Fried Chicken. She's still talking about the Narragansett Autocrat Coffee Milk Stout. Uh, recently tried KFC sauce for the first time. Did I hate it? Okay, well, we're just talking about sauce. And um, most of you are correct. It is because they try to, to get away from the word fried and uh, be, to make it sound healthier. It's still fried. Actually, um, it was originally it was pressure cooked, and I think I think they pressure cooked the chicken and then they they flash fried it. Uh, they were famous for their eleven herbs and spices, but there was um, there was a book called Big Secrets that managed to get some of the um, the the coating the batter that they put on the chicken and did a reverse engineering of it to see what was in it, and it turns out the eleven herbs and spices were salt, pepper, and MSG. Um, but, you know, maybe originally it started out with actually 11 herbs and spices. It actually did. But uh, in later years, salt, pepper, and MSG. Um, and probably flour. I'm not sure what they put on it. But, yeah. Let me tell you, I love KFC. Uh, Tony, I used to like KFC, but there's so much better. It's like usually to me it's like greasy and um, not not good. Um, I like the uh, – I like the – like some of the um, – the chicken sandwiches and stuff they came out with aren't too bad. Uh, they came out with a pickle fried chicken that was like, they just squirted pickle juice on it. It was like such a, it was useless. Uh, it was not good. But um, I prefer churches. I prefer Popeyes. Um, we have to go back and revisit the original Pioneer Chicken. We're going to do that. Um, some of the other places are, are like are just better than, than a KFC um, Popeyes. I like Popeyes better than KFC. But that's just me. Now I try. Oh, uh, K Blim sixty eight. You are are you are new to the room? I believe I don't recognize your name, but welcome welcome to the room. Where are you from, K Blim? Uh, Val tried Mamma Mia pizza for the pizza beer. Mamma Mia pizza beer from Total Wine and More. It was great, heavy oregano flavor. Pizza beer. That sounds interesting. I would have to try that. We, now, we get on a sidetrack with Julie talking about pigeons. and I, uh, Julie, I think, are you talking about the dive bombing pigeons? Because Julie, Julie has not had a lot of luck with, with pigeons who, who, like, try to attack her and dive bomb her. I think maybe that's it. But uh, you know what? If, if KFC made fried pigeon, I would eat it. I, would eat, I like pigeon. Uh, what do they call pigeon? Squab. They call pigeon squab, so you'll eat it in a restaurant. So if you see squab on the menu, it's pigeon. But it's good. You should try it. Sanders brought his pressure cooker around until someone let him sell it out of their store, I think. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what the um, 
I don't remember exactly how it worked, but he pressure cooked the chicken and then fried it, then flash fried it. Because otherwise, you know, if you're going to fry chicken for people, you know, who want fast food, it's going to take long. It's going to take a long time to fry a chicken uh, for people to eat. KFC is bland compared to others. Popeye is good. Yeah, I agree with you, El Marano. Uh, anyone like Cajun rice from Popeyes? I have not. Tr I don't remember tr if I tried the Cajun rice. Probably did if they asked me for sides. I probably would have got the Cajun rice because I like Cajun real Cajun rice, dirty rice really good so i don't know a stinky funky oh well stinky probably because they because a real good cajun rice or a dirty rice has liver in it which kind of gives that smell so um i like i used to make cajun rice but i haven't in years i should do that again i need to do that again um in illinois we have, only have kfc we used to have popeyes or don't like my chicken with a side of cockroaches so they got closed down well i'm going to be honest with you and bob you can help me you can back me up here very, very few restaurants don't have cockroaches. Very, very few restaurants don't have mice. Um, it's uh, when the inspectors come around, they don't see them and they give them a uh, they give them a thumbs up. But uh, but honestly, the, uh, those kind of uh, vermin and critters are attracted to food places with food, and so it's inevitable that you're going to have cockroaches and mice in there. And you got to get used to it, and you got to hope that when they're cooking the food, they cook it at a high enough temperature that anything that those cockroaches or mice have. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be uh, obliterated by the by the heat but uh, but yeah uh, they uh, my guess is that Popeyes got caught when the, when the inspectors went in there and saw cockroaches and that's why they got closed down but I almost I can almost guarantee you that almost any restaurant even even expensive fancy restaurants probably have mice and probably have cockroaches uh, I can't believe I'm most dirty and only recently learned that pigeons and doves are the same bird yeah uh, the uh, pigeon, the pigeon that we know, the technical name for it is the rock dove. So uh, those pigeons are, are actually, uh, they're, they're actually doves and they're called rock doves. And then there's other breeds of pigeons like, uh, uh, I think, it, what is it, Crown Queen, Queen Victoria pigeon? It's a this pigeon that has this kind of crest on the top of their head and everything. Um, and I don't know if there's a separate family or that's part of the dove family. They're actually pretty big, so... Uh, we actually found an interesting answer on KFC. The state of Kentucky trademarked their name and charged anyone to use it. Also, Kentucky Bluegrass for renamed to Shenandoah Bluegrass to avoid the fee. That's interesting. So Kentucky Fried Chicken is is paying for the for the name, and and maybe they didn't want to pay. Yeah, it's always about the money. Follow the money. It's always about the money. Uh, living in Florida, originally from Qu oh Quincy, not Quincy. I mean not not Quincy, Quincy, as they say in Massachusetts. So another mass hole. And I mean that, um, I mean that um, from a fellow mass hole, uh, Cablin. So um, yeah, uh, originally, not originally from Massachusetts, but grew up in Massachusetts, the North Shore. Uh, Quincy is, uh, is almost considered Boston proper, but I think it's uh, technically it's South Shore. South Shore, I think, I believe. Kentucky is a jerk state. Well, there's jerks in the state, but uh, I don't know that, that on a whole I would say they're a jerk state. Uh, Canada, BC, we have the rice and beans at our Popeyes, and here my fiance, fiance really likes it. I, I, uh, I would agree with you. Um, I really like it, too. Uh, did I miss anything? Chick-fil-A makes an awesome chicken sandwich. Yeah, I suppose. That's one of those things that, like, you, you know, do you, if you don't mind crossing over to the dark side... Uh, I had Chick-fil-A a long, long, long time ago. I try to stay away from it, um, but, uh, you know, I might have to go just to compare. So there you go. Uh, okay. We Oh, Mighty Sauce 3. Hey, um, I don't – I guess there's so many people in the room that I'm, I don't recognize who have been on the channel before. So uh, Mighty Sauce 3, you are one of them, and uh, welcome to the channel. Where, you, where be you from, Mighty Sauce? Uh, we were, we, let's see, we finished our Italian breadsticks, our tiny Italian breadsticks. We finished our bubblegum pretzels. We tried our beer. We have left our, uh, seaweed pearls. So again, the company is called Season. The product is called Caviar, because probably they can't legally call it caviar if it's not fish eggs, and it is not fish eggs. It is, uh, vegan, imported from Denmark, kosher, Black seaweed pearls, and this has a bunch of different spices in it that you will never find in um, in caviar. So probably why one of the other reasons they can't call it caviar. So let's go ahead and open this up. And again, this is one of the things that was in the 
uh, box of pleasant surprises from Claudia for my birthday. I'm one of Matt's mods. Oh, okay, cool. So you're coming over from Reckless Eating. Well, welcome, Mighty Sauce. South Shore. Lived on the South Shore for 37 years. And Samuel Duran back in the room. Samuel, we have not seen you in a while. It's been a while since we've seen you, but welcome back. Good to see you. I, I talked louder, and, and Doodle probably, he's just chilling. Oh, no, he wants a snack. All right, I did promise him I would give him another snack, so we're going to give him another chicken snack. Thank you, Janice. I will do that. As soon as Doodle gets his snack, I will do a card. Thank you for reminding me. All righty. Now, Doodle, where'd you go? Doodle? Doodle, snack. Snack. Oh, here, come here. Let's meet everybody who you haven't met yet. Come here. Come here. For anybody who came in late, this is Doodle. Doodle is a um, regular on our channel. He always manages to find his way uh, in our videos. Um, when we're filming videos in the other room, as soon as we pull up, pull the bench up to the table, he knows that there's going to be food, and so he's in, in all the videos. Look at him. He, he's just focused on the snack, not caring whatsoever that I'm holding him. You know, just focused on the snack. So not to be mean to him, I will give him the snack, and off he goes. He's probably going to take off there. There he goes. Okay, he's got a snack off like a bride's nighty. Alrighty. Doodle's World. Yes, Doodle's World. I think we've actually called it Doodle's World in a couple of videos. So, a uh, card before I open the caviar. Thank you, Janice, for reminding me. Nope, that's stupid. I'm not going to ask that. Um, nope, not going to ask that. Yeah, I'll ask this. What was the first American fast food restaurant in China? Again, once again, the question is, what was the first American fast food restaurant in China? I'm not even going to pretend there's a back burner. I'm not even going to pretend there's low heat on that. I'm just going to stick that over there and worry about it. So to look at this, it looks like it looks like uh, um, actual like uh, beluga caviar from sturgeon. It's kind of have a greenish tone to it. This is like dark black. Uh, like uh, lumpfish caviar. Lumpfish caviar is usually dark black like that. So it's dark black. I should open this and be able to smell the ocean. I think. No. It smells like seaweed. It smells like um, nori. Ooh, it smells like... It smells a little like armpit. What is up with that? Hey, did Tom join us? Did I miss that? Where's oh? There he is. Hey Tom, we were talking about you earlier. Your yours must have been ringing. Welcome Tom. Good to see you again. I do not like that smell. It smells like body odor. And at first you get the seaweed smell, then it smells like body odor. Not good. Oh, well, let's hope it tastes good. The lengths vegans will go through. To eat something that supposedly tastes like something they can't eat anymore. At least I think that's how it works. Again, these are Cars water table crackers. They're somewhat inert. Um, they're not salty. They're not sugary. They're not sweet. They're they're just crackers that are a, a palette waiting for some paint. So in this case, the paint is our little. I mean, they they look good, right? They look like little fish eggs, but they're not. So, let's put some on the cracker. Does that seem like a decent amount? Does that seem like too much? Let's see. Well, we'll certainly get a taste of that. No, Doodle, you can't have this. And after tasting it, you might not want this. This thing about Val, he smells it, he smells it, it smells like an armpit, and he eats it. Yes, that is correct. If it's supposed to be edible, I will eat it. I don't care what it smells like. I will eat it anyways. I don't care what it tastes. What it, I don't care the texture. Um, I don't care that you're crazy. I don't care that you're my son. Get out of here. No. Uh, uh, yeah, I will eat it. Uh, I will at least give it the old college try. I will take a bite of it, and I might not finish it, and I might not uh, ever eat it again. But, but yes, you're absolutely correct, Philip. Here we go. Thank you for making us part of your day, Mighty Sauce. Good to see you. Hope we see you again soon.
uh, every Saturday at 1 p.m. Pacific time, unless we say otherwise. Slightly salty. It doesn't have a pop of caviar. One of the most satisfying things about caviar is that pop. So when you bite into it, each of the eggs, there's like that fluid inside of it. And it's this briny kind of oceany pop in your mouth. That texture is just, I mean, that's what, you, that's what you're going for is that texture and that, that kind of ocean squirt when you, when you bite into that and it pops. This doesn't do that so much. The salt is subtle. It comes in afterwards. The spice takes it into a weird place. It doesn't taste fishy anymore. And maybe that's the idea, is to get people to eat this without having to eat, know that they're eating fish eggs. And, and just say, well, this is in the same form as caviar. But it, honestly, I'm going to have to say it tastes nothing like caviar. And so they need to stop advertising as such. It smells like an armpit. But, you know, as long as it doesn't affect the flavor, I don't care. I'm going to give it another col the old college try again. I think you're right, Bob. I think it needs hot sauce. Let's try again. Let's see if, you know, because sometimes you take a, the first bite of something and it doesn't t taste quite right, and you get the second bite, and then you, you see what they were trying to do, and you get that flavor in the second bite. Sometimes. We'll see if that's the case here. Second bite's not so bad. Slightly salty, but it does not taste like caviar whatsoever. It doesn't taste oceany. You don't get that pop. Can we have thumbs in? I'm gonna have a thumbs in the middle. And 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 if I and if I'm really honest about it, I I would give it a thumbs down just because of the smell, because caviar does not smell like armpit. And this does. So um, I will probably eat some more of this, but, you know, not all in one sitting, that's for sure. So, yeah, getting a thumbs. I'm in the middle trending down. So our question was, what was our question? What was the fast, first fast food in rest? Well, why don't, I, why don't I try that in English this time? What was the first fast food restaurant in China? And let's see what the answers were. Uh, let's see. Um, Bob said probably McDonald's. Big Tony said McDonald's. El Marijuano 209 said Shake Shack. Um, yeah, and it's funny because uh, Tom did not say kumquat. But that, that, again, that's not a fast food chain. So uh, Janice said KFC. Um, Cablin 68 said KFC. Uh, Amy Cakey said McDonald's. The correct answer is Kentucky Fried Chicken. It was probably Kentucky Fried Chicken back then, too. Kentucky Fried Chicken was the fast, first fast food restaurant in China. I did not know that either. But uh, I would have thought it was McDonald's because McDonald's is everywhere. But it was, in fact, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Cass says onions and eggs with it like traditional caviar. Well, no, I mean, traditional caviar, you eat on like an ivory spoon. And you. some people say you put it on like a, a, a silver spoon or a metal spoon, but I don't like that because like a silver spoon, um, a silver spoon can, uh, uh, is a conductor. It uh, conducts electricity. And, and so that's why you get that metallic taste when you put a silver spoon in your mouth. And if you want to taste that caviar, the silver spoon takes away from it. I don't know why people say use a silver spoon because to me, it would ruin the taste of caviar because you get that metallic metallic, almost electrical taste, like like uh, like putting a battery terminal in your mouth, like tasting the end of a, a nine volt battery. It's that same kind of thing if you, if you use a silver spoon. So I think they use ivory spoons, something along those lines with traditional caviar. But, um, you know, onion and eggs is a fun thing to do with caviar, but I don't know that it's a traditional way you eat it. I think, um, um, I don't know, like like if you go to like a really, really fancy place and you order like a $150 an ounce caviar, like how is it served? What is it served on? I thought it was crackers, but I could be wrong. You could have only one condiment other than hot sauce for the rest of your life. What would it be? Mm. That's a tough question because um, certain condiments are 
um, certain condiments are good for some things and not other things, right? It certainly wouldn't be ketchup. That would not be ketchup. Um, uh, barbecue sauce is good, but it's not good on everything. I would not want to put barbecue sauce on a um, on a hot dog. Um, I guess may mayonnaise is pretty uh, mayonnaise is pretty consistent. Um, it it uh, it adds taste, it doesn't really take away from stuff. So mayonnaise is pretty good, and the and but one of my favorite uh, certainly for like hot dogs, for pretzels, and for even burgers sometimes mustard. So I would say mustard. Uh, but Cassandra, if I had to pick, I would, yeah, I would say mustard. Um, and I would just say, uh, although I like Dijon mustard, although I like spicy mustard, I like stone ground mustard, um, I would say just for simplicity's sake, plain yellow mustard. Like French's even would be okay. I would say mustard, yellow mustard. That would be it. <laughs> I wasn't here to say come guat. No, but somebody else said it for you, Tom. That's cool. I thought you were supposed to use a wooden spoon. Oh, wooden would be good too. Uh, because again, wooden, wooden, wooden or or um, ivory would not impart flavor to it, but a metal spoon would. So, uh, so yeah, wooden spoon would work too. Um, the girls love the row on sushi. Yeah, I do too. Uh, my favorite is um, flying fish, flying fish row. I really like the flying fish row. Use a plastic spoon. That would work too, uh, and that would be funny, especially if you were paying like one hundred and fifty dollars an ounce for caviar and then eating it with a plastic spoon. That would be funny. I would like that. Cablin, is that playing? Oh, okay. There, there you go. Uh, mayo, great answer. I love mustard too. Nothing but hot dog with sauerkraut mustard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, by the way, the Cassandra. So everyone knows that the best deal, I want to say the best deal because the best deal is probably on a hot dog is probably Ikea. They have 75, it used to be 50 cents, but now it's 75, 75 cent hot dog. But the, but the best deal on a real good hot dog is uh, obviously Costco. So uh, for $1.50, you, you get the hot dog and a drink. Um, unfortunately, if you don't want the drink, it's still $1.50. But it's still a good deal because it's a, it's a large hot dog. It's a big hot dog. And, um, and uh, obviously, you put mustard on that. But the thing is, they have sauerkraut, but you have to ask for it. So it's like a hidden menu item, uh, as having to ask for the sauerkraut. So we did, uh, we did all four of our snacks. We did our alcoholic beverage, which I think I need to wash some of that caviar down with. It is time on Trippy Food, where once again we do something stupid. So let's start. Let's start with this. We'll start with one of the water crackers. Hang on. I don't know what that means. I'm not sure what Cave Lynn was saying that Val is a closet ketchup lover. No. Um, I like ketchup on some things. I like ketchup on french fries, but never by itself. So I always mix stuff in it. So usually I mix like uh, Tabasco or a hot sauce, um, A1, Worcestershire sauce, black pepper, kind of mix that up, and, and that's what I dip my french fries in. But the bait, the, the, Basis of that is ketchup. I don't really put ketchup on much else. I put ketchup on my hot dog. Let's fight. El marijuana, you and me, mano y mano. Um, yeah, no, I mean, here's the thing. You know, like, fly your own freak flag. Fly it high. I, I, I don't judge. If you want to put ketchup on your hot dog, that's fine. But for me, it doesn't work for me, and I don't put ketchup on a hot dog, uh, and I prefer not to, but uh, that's okay. Uh, tartar sauce is good with fries too. It is, Bob. You're absolutely right. I do like I like tartar sauce with fries. All right, so here's we're gonna have to build this. Let's see how we're gonna do this. So we're gonna start with our uh, one of our cars water table crackers. We'll put uh, a single uh, bubble gum yogurt pretzel on that. We will break one of these um, crunchy peanut snacks in half. And put that on there. There we go. Looking good. Uh, let's see. Um, we have our tiny breadsticks. Which are breadsticks, but they honestly they taste like like tiny Italian breadsticks. And I mean that in the best way. Uh, mayo on well done fries or mayo chup. Julie, you're talking about mayo chup, the one that cra I think is craft. They makes it already mixed together, or do you mix up your own mayo and ketchup together? Which I think is uh, Thousand Island dressing, if I'm not mistaken, right? 
like uh, if you go to McDonald's, a special sauce, or if you go to In-N-Out, that sauce that they put on the burgers, I think it's just a combination of mayo and ketchup. Now, I put a little mustard in there, too, but I think it's just mayo and ketchup mixed together. Could be wrong. That happens sometimes. And last and least, our... How am I going to keep this together? It looks like I'm building like a little fort here, but let's see. It's pretty to look at. Like if, if I went over to somebody's house and they were serving like hors d'oeuvres and light snacks and they served something that looked like this, I'm like, oh my God, that's beautiful. I'm going to try that. But knowing what's in it, I have, uh, I got a bad feeling about this. Here we go. Cheers. This kills it. Absolutely kills it. Everything else is really nice. Sweet. There's there there you can taste the herbs from the, the breadsticks. I'm calling them. What do they call them? Kubuk cracker. I really like those too. Um you can taste those herbs in there. The herbs really come out in that. The uh, peanut snack, the nice crunch to it, the bubblegum um the kind of bubblegum flavor, the yogurt flavor on them. You get that off the pretzel. The pretzel's got a nice crunch to it. The uh, car's water, table water crackle has a nice crunch to it. The breadstick has a nice crunch to it. The peanut has a nice crunch to it. And then I go and put this on it. It might have been good if I didn't put this on it, but this, like, ruined it. That concoction's going to get a hard thumbs down. Yeah! My crackers decided to roll away. I'm going to need these later, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to wash that out of my mouth using the Abita PB and Jams malt beverage. Somebody asked earlier what I what I would pair that that this I'm going to, I can't really call it a beer. The malt beverage. Somebody asked what I would pair that with. I would pair that with what I just ate. Well, go good with that. I just ate. <coughs> I forgot you're supposed to drink that and not breathe it. Um, okay, I, let's see what I forgot or while I was busy yapping. Did I, did I ask a question I didn't answer? No, we're good on the... We can ask another. We have time. Um, <coughs> have you been to Albuquerque, New Mexico? I love Albu Saran, uh, Samuel. Welcome back to the room. I, I think... Did I, I don't think I mentioned you earlier. I didn't think I saw you earlier, but welcome back to the room, Samuel. Uh, I love Albuquerque, New Mexico. I love that whole area. Um, two, how many years ago was it? I can't remember how many years ago uh, Claudia and I went to Albuquerque. And um, when we went to Albuquerque, we went to uh, Taos. We went to Santa Fe. We went to uh, Roswell. And, uh, and I loved it. I actually loved it. Uh, one of the things that I loved the most about that trip was in um, at Acoma, Acoma Pueblo. They call it Sky City because it's on top of a mesa. Uh, but uh, um, Acoma Pueblo and um, Taos Pueblo, um, I loved it because um, we uh, we visited and the the Native Americans, um, the Native Americans there were welcoming. And, uh, and I want to say forgiving, because they would have every right to have somebody white-looking come in there and hate their guts, because they were, um, they were oppressed by the Spanish who first came there, uh, who, uh, who had them convert to Christianity under threat of death, who had to give up their religions and their own practices, who uh, were essentially uh, uh, forced to build the churches uh, like slave labor. Um, and then when the Spanish left and the Americans took over, it was a whole other thing of, oh, you're going to have to stay on reservations. You can't, you know, you can't be found everywhere. I mean, so they would have every right to be, <coughs> um, distrusting and, um, 
hostile and they are not and they are welcoming and they are friendly and they are like oh you have to come back when we're doing our um, our um, celebrations and stuff oh, really really nice in Taos uh, at Taos Pueblo uh, I met a woman whose uh, her grandfather was on um, was in the World's Fair I think it was the New York World's Fair um, in the Kodak Pavilion because they were using his picture he was a uh, he was a chief and um, and just like uh, enjoyed the cafe, had uh, br uh, blue corn tortillas and uh, pinon uh, coffee, which is uh, made from pine nuts. And just really, really wonderful people. I love the atmosphere. I love the the you know the the culture, uh, the lo the local culture and everything. So New Mexico for me, I, like I gotta get. I I can't wait to go back there. But, you know, Albuquerque was part of that. I would love to go back to Albuquerque for the Balloon Festival. The closest thing I've ever experienced like that is the, um, here in California, where is it, that um, the uh, Temecula. Temecula has a Balloon Festival in June. And I went to the Temecula Balloon Festival. But I'm sure it's nothing like the one in Albuquerque. So, yeah, I, did. I went to Albuquerque and turned left. Yeah, it's like, uh, uh, must have made a wrong turn in Albuquerque. That's funny. This doesn't look like Pismo Beach. Uh, what else did I miss? Oh, okay. Uh, that was a play on Bugs Bunny. You should have uh, should have taken that left turn at Albuquerque. I think he always said that whenever he got lost. I prefer Miracle Whip instead of Mayo. Yeah, so does Matt. Matt Zion does does also. Uh, and not only does he just prefer it, but he says that Mayo is not real mayonnaise. That Miracle Whip is, which is bizarre because it's just the opposite. Is true, but he prefers Miracle Whip. That's fine. Uh, after all these snacks, trying the beer from the first sip, has your opinion of it changed? Well, yes, the opinion of the beer is that it pairs well with that crap that I just put together. You know, I, I, I would say that it would pair well even with, you know, here's what I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to make that same concoction again, except I'm not going to put the, the fake caviar on it. And we'll see if, we'll test that theory. So, so your, yes, uh, I would agree with you in that it did change my, my uh, impression in that um, that maybe you just have to pair it with the right thing. So here's what I'm going to do. I got the, the crunchy peanut snack, the breadsticks, and the um, uh, bubblegum yogurt pretzels. Those are good together because I didn't ruin them with a fake caviar. Moment, please. I have to chew my food. My mom, when I was a kid, she made me a steak. She made all of us a steak. But when I was eating a steak, Philip, see if you remember this. I remember it. But I'm not sure if you remember it. I was eating a steak. I had a piece of it in my mouth. And I cut another piece and I was bringing it up to my mouth. And my mom said, swallow that before you eat another piece. And I'm like, okay. Ooh. Just swallow the piece of the piece of meat that was in my mouth. Uh, not completely chewed. I thought she was going to have a heart attack because I, think, I thought she thought I was going to choke to death. I didn't choke to death. In hindsight, it was a pretty stupid thing to do. But I have to remember to chew my food sometimes. All right. So try the snack without the caviar to, to ruin it. Let me try the beer. Uh, it's not a beer. It's a malt beverage. Yep. That pairs well with that. So I would say this would pair well with sweet, crunchy snacks. There you go. It's a good beverage. It pairs well with sweet, crunchy. I'm still not getting peanuts. I'm still getting the taste of peanut. Well, I am from the crunchy peanut snack, but I'm not getting a peanut taste from here. But it pairs well with that. With you know, it's like um, it would. It pairs well with a sweet, sweet, crunchy snack. I would not say like uh, like a check mix or something with a lot of salt on it. Probably would not pair well with that. But it, it it pairs well with a sweet, crunchy snack. So so yeah, it does raise my opinion of this uh, alcoholic beverage. Thanks, Val. I was. AFK. I know what AF is. 
um, by itself. I'm not sure what AFK is. When you tried that, you're a champ. Oh, well. No, if you really want to think I'm a champ, probably probably next week I will put out my my response or my my response to Tom Old Guy in Colorado's challenge to eat the 2020 burrito, and and then you can think I'm a champ or not or a, or a, what's the opposition of a champ? A chump. Uh, so um, I'll let you uh, I'll let you reserve judgment when that comes out. Uh, Cam Love. I don't recognize you, Ken Love. You must be new to the room. If you are, uh, say hello to everybody. Everybody say hello to Ken Love. I think you probably already have started. Where are you from, Ken Love? Uh, it's good to see you. What is my favorite basketball team and player? Well, um, what most people probably know in the room, uh, but I will go ahead and repeat that anyways, is I'm not much of a sports fan. I don't follow sports at all. Uh, I couldn't, uh, let's see, um, who, uh, I know Damian Lillard and I know he plays for the Portland Trailblazers. And the only reason I know is because the company I used to work for had box seats that they would let their employees go. And I would go to the games and everyone made a big deal out of Damian Lillard at, uh, at oh, who's the other one? Uh, Steph Curry. But I don't know what team he plays for. Uh, and everyone makes a big deal out of them. Um, uh, I guess, uh, let's see. I guess you're talking about people who play now. Uh, but I don't know a lot of people. Uh, who's the guy? Who's the guy that was playing for, um, that they make a big deal out of? Maybe he was playing for Cincinnati or he plays for Cincinnati that they make a big deal out of, uh, but I don't know. So I don't know that I had a favorite team. Um, growing up, it would have been the Celtics only because I was local in Boston and that's the only team I really knew, didn't know about a whole lot of stuff. And if you were lived in Boston, that you had to be, um, you had to be, a uh what's the word i'm looking for uh uh if you were in boston and you were into sports then from a basketball standpoint the la lakers were your enemy and from a from a baseball standpoint the new york yankees were your enemy not the mets just the yankees um so i guess my if i had to pick a favorite basketball player i would have to say larry bird only just because it was like he was he was like the man uh, back in the day. Um, I, I'm sure Michael Jordan was better than Lar than Larry Bird, but like I said, we you know we all gathered around Larry Bird and everything. Uh, it would be Larry Bird, and I don't know that I really had a favorite team. Um, but currently, I you know I don't follow it enough to to say that I have a favorite player. Um, it, would be, it would be the same for hockey. It would be the same for baseball. You know. Um, what did I miss? Does Miracle Whip have Does Miracle Whip have sweet pickle juice in it or something? Well, if it had pickle juice in it, Matt wouldn't like it. Uh, I don't know what. It, I think it has oil in it, and there's something that, that mayonnaise has in it that Miracle Whip does not. And um, I think they substitute oil for it. Is it maybe egg? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure what. Oh, I'm not sure what what Miracle Whip has in it that or doesn't have in it that mayonnaise does, but. Uh, it's not good. Yeah, Miracle Whip is not good. Miracle Whip is okay. Uh, it's okay if you're if like if you're making a let's say tuna fish salad and you're putting pickle relish and a bunch of other things in it, um, then it's it's innocuous. It just hides in the background and it's it's fine. It's just like a it's like a um, what is that titanium white, which is like the basis when you're painting with uh, oil paints. You use titanium white, and that's basic your basis for you mix other paints with the titanium white to make your colors. And it's uh, I think Miracle Whip is kind of like the titanium white of condiments. Uh, I am same uh, Caitlin 868 instead of Whip instead of Mayo. Oh, interesting. Okay. Any flavor over regular Mayo? Is it uh, what is it, Tom? About the Mayo? Is it the taste of the egg? What is or what what is it in Mayo that you don't prefer that you prefer? Um, Miracle Whip over that. Miracle Whip has sugar in it. Uh, does mayonnaise have sugar in it? Do they put sugar in regular mayonnaise? No, they put sugar in everything. Miracle Whip is made from water, soybean oil, high fructose corn syrup, vinegar, modif modified cornstarch, eggs, salt, oh, so there's egg in it, salt, natural flavor, mustard, flour, potassium sorbate, spice, and dried garlic. Mm, mm, mm. So good. So good for you. Um, Solo Blue, away from keyboard. You're typing while you're away from the keyboard. 
that is amazing. I've heard of wireless keyboards, but I've never heard of wireless fingers. Um, oh, AFK means away from keyboard. Oh, okay. Right. I know what uh, uh, PEBCAC means. It's a uh, problem that exists between keyboard and chair. Uh, tend to make my own Miracle Whip type mail. Oh, interesting. I bet that's good because you're making it yourself and you're using good, like decent ingredients. So it's probably good. But what is it? Uh, but Tom, what what is it that's in mail that you don't like? And so when you make your own Miracle Whip type mail, so what is it? What is it that you don't like? I th I think I want to say it's the there's oil in the there's oil in the Miracle Whip, but I don't know. If there's oil in mayonnaise. I don't know. Uh, remember, the only difference between a chimp and a chump is you. <laughs> That's true. I took you to a World Series. Yes, Bob, I remember that. 1980, I want to say 1985, Mets versus the Boston Red Sox game four of the World Series. Uh, it, was not the it was not the game where the ball went through, um, what was the guy's name? Uh, Bill Buckner did not go through Bill Buckner's legs. Bill Buckner was running back and forth out in the outfield, and his feet were flopping around like flounders. And you could tell that he wasn't like on his game. Uh, but it was, it was the game where Gary Carter of the New York Mets hit two out of the park home runs. That I remember about the uh, World Series game. But then, thank you, Bob, for that. Uh, if I didn't thank you properly back when you took me to that World Series game, thank you for that. That was uh, my only time going to Fenway Park. My only time. I've I've seen uh, other baseball games. Let's see. I went to a game with the the Steelers, not Steelers. What is the Pittsburgh team? The uh, Pirates. The Pirates, and I can't remember who they were playing um, in the Three Rivers Stadium before they destroyed that. Um, uh, Bob, you and I went to a Yankees game at Yankee Stadium. We saw the Yankees play the Angels. I believe it was the uh, California Angels. Um, at Yankee Stadium. That was in the 80s. I can't remember exactly what year it was, but that was back in the 80s, and that was fun. Uh, I went to, uh, Philip, with you, I went to a um, uh, Red Sox versus the Angels at Angel Stadium in Anaheim. Uh, we went to that. Uh, and then I went to a bunch of uh, Dodgers games because my uncle had box seats and he didn't always go all the time. So sometimes he would give me the tickets when he wasn't going, which is fun. I mean, I, I like baseball so much more at the stadium than uh, than watching it on TV. Um, so I remember that. Oh, bye, guys. You went to my niece's birthday. Well, thank you, Amy, for joining us. Uh, good to see you all as always. And glad you could stay with us for a longer time this time. Sox, Pats, Bees, and Celts fan. Well, of course, you're from Boston. Of course you would be a Sox, Pats, Bees, and Celts fan. I guess, uh, I imagine there are people in Boston that are not necessarily Sox, Pats, Pats Bees, and Celts fans. Uh, football is uh, one of those weird things where I've only been to one football game my whole life. I mean, one uh, NFL game my whole life. And that was at um, Texas Stadium. I think it's called Texas Stadium in Dallas. Uh, and I saw the, uh, what is the Dallas team? Dallas Cowboys. I saw the Dallas Cowboys play the, I, I want to say the Detroit Tigers, or maybe it's the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions. I saw that. Uh, only because I was at a conference, and the uh, guy that I worked with that was at the conference with me, we were staying in Dallas, and we we're he says, do you mind if I watch that on TV? And I'm like, no, go ahead, turn it on. And he's watching, and he goes, you know, that's right up the street. We should actually go. He says, if I buy you tickets, will you drive down there, and, and, and do you want to go to the game? I'm like, yeah, sure. And so, uh, so he did. He uh, we bought like cheap tickets, twenty bucks or something like that, and uh, sat way up in the balcony and everything. You know, where you could hear the people screaming more than we could hear what's going on in the field. And I felt bad because he had explained everything to me and the game. But, uh, but you know, it was fun, I suppose. Um, let's see. Did I miss anything? I did not. Oh, hang on a second. Everything's scrolling past me here. Would have been nineteen eighty six. Yeah, uh, eighty six. It was eighty five or eighty six. I can't remember the exact year, but I just remember it was Game Four of the World Series. At Family Park. So thank you, Bob. And uh, Phil, uh, it was a lot of fun uh, going to um, Angels Stadium to see that game with the Red Sox uh, playing the Angels. I think the Red Sox did lose that time. But um, but what I do remember about that game was that foot-long hot dog that they had. It was really, really good. I have to remember who does their hot dogs. It's not like the do the Dodger dogs really, it's crap. Not like the Dodger dog. But the hot dog, that foot-long hot dog they had there was pretty good. There's really no taste to mayo. I prefer mayo with high levels of vinegar and other... Flavors like sun-dried tomatoes. 
That's interesting because I didn't realize there was that much of a variety in Mayo. Same year, Glenn Wesley missed the open net in triple OT in the Stanley Cup. I don't remember that. Uh, the only thing I remember about hockey was, you know, uh, was um, Bobby Orr doing the flying thing. Uh, 1970, I think it was. 1970 Stanley Cup? I don't even know who they were playing against. I just remember that. Uh, mixed mayo with stuff as well, like sriracha mayo. I like sriracha mayo. That's fine. Uh, barbecue was good at Angel Stadium. It well, yeah. I'm trying to remember what we had. So like, I had I had the hot dog. Philip, what did you eat? What did you have there? The hot dog was really good. It was a, a foot long hot dog. It was really really good. Went to one Patriots game but at the same stadium. I saw Bowie the Stones and McCartney twice. I um, I've been to the stadium to see. I took Julie to see New Kids on the Block at the stadium, and I saw uh, The Who at the stadium. I never saw a football game at the stadium. Um, but I'm trying to remember, who did I go to see The Who with, Bob? I thought I went with you, but maybe it was Larry Novak who went to see The Who with. That was like their first farewell tour, and they're still they're still touring. So, Cat seems to be a five minutes lag time from the actual conversation. Oh. Oh, crap. That's bad. Chat. Uh, remember Alice Cooper's restaurant? Yes, uh, Alice Cooperstown. They closed, Philip. Uh, they closed last year, which I think was a shame because uh, I was actually going to go out there and do that. Uh, what was it? The big unit that we had. It was like that 22 inch long hot dog. Uh, and if I remember correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, because it was it was you and um, you and uh, Cassandra's parents and Cassandra and uh, and somebody else was out there. Um, I can't remember who else was out there, but but we went to Alice Cooperstown and we we got we each got separate plates, but then we got uh, the uh, the big unit for the table. And the one thing I remember about that was usually when you when somebody when when something is like a novelty like that, it's not that great. But there were other dishes that are okay, and I remembered the opposite being true. Like all the other dishes were, eh, you know, just okay, and some of them weren't really that great. But that the hot, that twenty two inch sausage or hot dog, the big unit, was really good, which is really really surprising. That a um, that a novelty thing was actually better than than the regular fare. That I remember about it. But uh, but yeah, they did close this year, uh, this past year. So I don't think it was it was because of COVID. I think they just weren't doing much business and everything, and they did close. Tom, maybe your video isn't synced up. Sometimes mine lags, and I need to live click the live button. Oh, does that work? Click the live button. Where is the live button? I don't know if I see a live button. That's okay. Um, Oh, looks like Tom retracted that. So maybe it maybe that was the case. I had the chicken. I don't remember what I had, but I just remember it was it was unimpressive. The the regular dish was unimpressive, but you had, you had some of that uh, the big unit, Phil, and uh, was pretty good. Oh, is it that time already? Uh, it is that time already. It is three o two. I keep talking and I just don't shut up. So uh, maybe it is because Val's talking about things. Um, maybe. So uh, it is. It is 3.03. We went three minutes over. I apologize for that. If you guys had something planned, if there was something on your schedule that I was taking you away from, I apologize for that. But I love speaking to you guys. I love speaking with you guys. I love interacting with you guys. This is, uh, uh, I, I say it, I sound like a bro broken record, but I mean it sincerely. This is the high point of my week. Um, I get to, um, in addition to talking with people that I consider friends that I've met through this, talking to regulars, getting new people in the room, speaking with new people in the room and everything. Um, that, that there's, a, there's family. There's family and friends that I've known for years that are on, on this chat. And, and outside of this, we don't usually talk that often, but it's a nice way to, to stay in touch and get together and talk about food and travel and fun things like that. So um, And sports stuck in there. So sports, sports snuck in there. So again, really, really enjoy it. Really always look forward to Saturdays and always look forward to the live stream. So uh, hopefully, unless things change, and I will let you guys know, uh, it will be the same time, same bat time, same bat channel, which is 1 p.m. Pacific time, um, Saturday, every Saturday. Uh, Julie had some weird problem where it said 9 p.m. Uh, or she saw it at 9 p.m. on YouTube. It was saying 9 p.m., but it's, it's 1 p.m. unless I specify otherwise that, you know, it's going to be later or earlier or we're going to have to switch to Sunday or something along those lines. Other than that, uh, I thank you all for joining us. Always have a good time. Always love the conversation. Always love interacting with you. And, and again, the high point of my week. So thank you very much. We remember that it's crazy out there. So please be careful. Please take care of yourselves. Please take care of other people and have a great weekend. We will see you next week. Thank you, everybody.